Okay, so welcome to session four, which deals with financial planning for growth. Now, every firm typically exists to effectively operate into the foreseeable future, for which reason it needs to ascertain what financial needs it will require in pursuance of that agenda and therefore actively prepare beforehand to achieve the goals. Now, corporate financial planning will ensure that managers select the most appropriate investments and the activities that will help in achieving financial objectives. And also, it helps in ensuring that, in terms of fund-wise, the firm is adequately prepared. Now, students will be equipped with the financial planning tools that will help in making decisions for growth and expansion in their businesses and going on. Now, at the end of this session, we're expecting students to be able to outline the financial planning process and how the decisions are interrelated. Be able to develop a simple financial plan using the percentage of sales approach and be able to uh, compute the external financing that a firm may need in its quest to grow. Also understand the four major decision areas that are involved in the long-term financial planning of a firm and identify the drivers of a firm's growth and also understand how capital structure policy and dividend policy may affect a firm's ability to grow. Our outline would look at the financial planning process and then also look at one of the main models that is used, the percentage of sales approach. Now, financial planning typically is planning into the firm's future given its current status. So in essence, you're looking at how you can grow into the future given what your current status is. And so then it involves the decision on what investments and activities will be most appropriate under the companies, uh, within the company's environment and the broader economic circumstances. So then it establishes the way and the strategies by which the financial objectives of a firm can be achieved. Now, financial planning has a number of objectives. In planning, it helps to ascertain the required investment in new assets. It helps to determine the degree of financial leverage or the borrowing that may be required by businesses in order to achieve its strategic goals. And this may include both short-term and long-term debt financing decisions. And then it may also influence or help in determining how much dividend or cash should be paid to shareholders in view of the firm's growth agenda and also look at how much liquidity a firm should have on hand in order to minimize the potential of going into financial distress. Now, why would we consider having a corporate financial plan? Now, in essence, having a corporate financial plan ensures that adequate funds are available. Because there's a plan, and the plan has been well thought out, there's that assurance that adequate funds will be made available to support the future agenda. Now, planning or having a corporate plan in place ensures that there's a reasonable balance between outflows and inflows so that stability is maintained. Because failing to plan sometimes may mean that in the execution of a strategy, there may be more outflows at a particular time than inflows, which then will trigger the firm into bankruptcy or could just bring the business to an end. Now, financial planning also, because it looks at the whole chain from beginning to end, reduces uncertainties with regards to changing market trends because in the financial planning process, the firm is forced to look at the potential elements that may arise in the execution of its plan and come up with solutions to address these uncertainties or these potential threats. Now, financial planning also helps in reducing the uncertainties because it does not take them away, but it ensures that there's stability because there's a plan in helping to avoid potential threats that could face the business in pursuing its strategic objectives. Now, one of the easiest ways of coming up with a financial plan is what we refer to as a percentage of sales approach. Now, the percentage of sales approach literally tries to relate every item that is relevant in the financial planning process to the sales that a firm experiences or has within a particular accounting year. Now, because all businesses are typically 
in operation to make sales, this becomes one of the easiest tools by which a firm can project into the future. So by projecting to make a certain improvement in its turnover or what we refer to as its sales revenue, we begin to outline elements that may change in relation to sales for which reason we need to start planning. In other words, the financial statement line items such as cash, inventory, accounts, receivable and payable, net income, etc. will be calculated as a percentage of revenue. And then these identified relationships or the ratios herein identified will be forecasted to apply to the next sales level in the forecasted period. Now, in doing that, we normally will come up with what we'll call a pro forma financial statement, which can be a pro forma income statement, or in, in layman's terms, you could refer to that as the estimated income statement or the estimated balance sheet. Now, how do you go about coming up with this future or this estimated or forecasted financial statement? You start first and foremost by identifying the relationship between your sales revenue or the typical relationship between sales revenue and items that are normally referred to as sales driven accounts when we mean sales driven accounts it means that they move whenever sales also change then you could also need to estimate fixed burdens that may not necessarily change that much with sales or even though they change the relationship is not direct with that you would also need to forecast your projected revenue by how much do you want your firm to grow in terms of sales now once you have identified how much sales you want in the future you relate the identified ratios to the estimated or the forecast sales revenue which then will come up with the relevant items for the incoming season after estimating the fixed burdens you apply them and then you construct the income statement and the balance sheet for the incoming season. Now, some issues you need to note. In constructing the forecasted financial statement, i.e. the income statement and the balance sheet, it is not every item that varies with sales. Now, typically within the income statement, a lot of the things do vary with sales and then but then when it comes to the balance sheet, not everything particularly varies with sales. So we'll look closely at some of the things that vary with sales and which ones do not vary with sales. When it comes to costs, especially direct costs, most of them vary directly with sales. So when this is the case, profit margin is usually constant. Depreciation and interest payment may not necessarily vary directly with sales because depreciation is related to the asset base of the firm and interest payment is related to the debt or the amount of loans that a firm has so if the loan amount is not changing by the same magnitude as estimated sales then we do not expect interest payments to vary accordingly now dividends are also management decisions and so do not necessarily vary directly with sales but they actually are influenced by the decision of how much profits the firm chooses to retain from its profit earnings. Now, when we look at the balance sheets, all assets, typically fixed assets, current assets, normally vary with sales. However, notes payable, long-term debt and equity do not vary directly with sales because they depend on decisions from management about capital structure. In essence, they do not vary instantaneously or spontaneously clear decisions must be taken at the managerial level for these values to change so then they do not vary directly with sales now once these are done the percentage of sales method will thus guarantee the forecasted financial statements and then by putting the financial statement especially the balance sheet in place the firm is able to identify whether or not it may need additional financing in order to achieve its estimated growth projections. Now, let's walk through briefly what it means for the percentage of sales approach. First, you are to express your balance sheet items that vary directly with sales in terms of the proportion of the percentages. So the ones that do not necessarily vary directly with sales are the long-term debt, retained earnings, stock, common stock, 
and then we have the so these are do not vary vary directly with sales then what you do is estimate your projected sales revenue for the incoming period now all the percentages derived from step one you are to use to apply to your estimated sales revenue for the incoming year or the incoming period or the planning period and then you have obtained the amounts you need for those future periods now where no percentage applies especially for long-term debt common stock and retained earnings you will just repeat the figures from the present time into the future period then you would calculate relevant projected retained earnings and then add on retained earnings to the balance sheet when you total up your balance sheets from your asset side and your liabilities and equities account you will determine whether there's a shortfall and this shortfall would indicate the total external financing that is required to keep the company running at the present operational levels and into the growth future that it seeks to attain. Now here we have an example that you can try your hands on where we look at a present season and the firm's income statement and in the coming season how they plan to grow and what will change in relation to that and how that will translate into a gap that needs to be filled up. Now in filling up the gap, the firm can make decisions on whether or not it will borrow most of its money or in some cases if it's got more profits within a particular year it can pay less dividend for which reason it can retain more profits to go back into funding the growth agenda of the business in the case where it has got excess funding it may choose to actually proceed by buying back some of its debt so as to uh, consolidate its capital structure position maybe have more equity and then what have you so these are ways that financial planning using the percentage of sales approach can be utilized by a finance manager to ensure that their future growth agenda is on track and is not threatened by lack of appropriate financing I hope you enjoy this session. We'll meet again in the next one. Thank you.